Uh, for this month, we're releasing a giant plateau featuring a 30 inch footprint and over two feet of playable on top space. Three mountains, uh, a mining elevator, and two buildings, including the start of a, of a witch's house for uh, Halloween in October. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the buildings off and then we're going to kind of go over the mechanics of these mountains and plateaus first, okay? Okay, first I'll talk briefly about the three mountains I'm putting out. Uh, each one of these mountains is going to have a cave entrance that goes to a small cave area on the inside. Uh, you can also use this lower level as rooms for underneath this plateau. And they're cut at just the right height so they'll act as a support uh, for the flat, the flat table of the plateau. Okay, and I'll show you those in a second. Each mountain is cut into three sections. So you'll have numerous options for how you can arrange parts of this rock. A lot of different sort of little scenarios you can use these rocks and you can have the whole mountain and then print part of it so you can have a bunch of smaller rocks sort of standing around. Or you could even rig it up so you just have a shorter mountain. Oops. So there's an example of using half of it. All right, I'm gonna get this out of the way now so we can just look at the plateau. All right. uh, the top two layers of these mountains use a simple cone stacking system so you don't have to worry about anything there. The lower part I brought back our open peg stacking system. Uh, and the reason I did that is so that you can lower these pegs when you want to use them underneath the plateau, okay? So that way they're up when you need to stack things and you can press them down when you don't need them and it'll be nice and, nice and flush for using underneath this thing, okay? And then when you're ready to raise them back up, you can just use a nail or anything else that will fit and go through the back and push the open pegs back up so that you can use the you can use them to stack again okay and it's that easy some of them might be a little loose uh, depending on your preferences you're probably going to want to increase the size of them one or three percent um, go ahead and use a raft when you print them print them in groups of 12 to 15. that's how i do it that way i don't get too invested if things go bad uh, but it's still, it's still uh, enough there that it's a useful number uh, and it still gets done, you know, in an hour. All right, it's a little hot out here today. Whew. Again, let's take a look at the plateau. So the plateau is made up of 16 sections on top, or I'm sorry, 14 sections on top, 14 sections below, and four crossbars to help hold things together. You want to get yourself some plastic epoxy and glue these things together in sets of four. I think I have one that's a set of three. And these crossbars are going to be snug. They're going to fit right in there and kind of snap the whole thing together for you. All right. One thing you're going to see is that I've numbered the bottom of this. And I suggest you do the same as you print out your parts, especially the ones that are square. Uh, but you should just go ahead and number them all. It'll just make it easier. I have one here that I haven't gl glued together yet, so I can show you how easy these things are to put together. Okay, So we have our crossbar there. And these things are going to fit in there fairly snug. I've already put this thing together several times and it's still tight. So these will really act as a guide while you're gluing this thing together and help hold it so you don't need to worry about clamps and things like that. All right, there it is, back together. Okay. 
Now to illustrate the use of these mountain bottoms here, I'll go ahead and reassemble it. I'm going to push down all my open pegs on this so it's nice and flat on top. Put that down in the center. Okay, and I could put as many of these as I wanted to in here. And then it's just the right height. to hold up the tabletop of my plateau. And there we are back where we started, okay? In terms of the sidewalls, I also suggest numbering those. Uh, I went ahead and glued mine together in sections of two or three or four or whatever seemed like it'd be a good combination for storage later on. Uh, I do not suggest gluing the whole thing together because when you take it apart, you're basically going to have a giant frame that isn't really going to fit on a shelf anywhere. Well, you can see here I got a mine entrance option. I've also included an option with no cave entrance at all for you. Next month, I'll probably uh, also build a ramp off to the side uh, for people who want a road that goes straight up there. And I think that about covers it. So let's go ahead and move on to the buildings. Okay, the first building we're going to go over today is the mining barracks. Uh, towards the end of this, towards the end of this presentation, I'll go ahead and pull out one of those mountains again and give you a little bit closer look at those uh, open peg stacking pegs. All right, so here we go on this. This top part here is a small granary. We have a little walkway that goes between the granary and the uh, watchtower. All right, this is all one piece. This is another piece. This just sets right on there. Uh, I have some granary stones uh, that you can just sort of glue into place. Okay. And we have the top of our tower here. The door is the same one we used on the scriptorium. And then this roof comes off in one piece. This is a pretty long print, so I have provided an option with one cut in half. Otherwise, you're looking at a 24 hour print there. And then here is the inside. You can see it's pretty spacious. I have a hide hanging for the door instead of a traditional door. Next month, I'll go ahead and release some abandoned bunks and stuff that you can fill this space up with. I'll figure out some other things that can go in there as well. Here's the start of our witch house. Uh, next month, I'll release a plateau with it, they'll feature a kitchen and a dungeon for underneath this, for underneath this structure. Let's go ahead and take it apart real quick. Uh, we have two cones. These bases print separately, and then you just insert them in and glue them. And then these things just hold themselves into place with gravity. The roof is a very large piece. It prints in one section. This is a 24-hour print. I'm providing another cut that divides the roof right about here. For those of you who don't want to deal with a one-day long print, here's our second floor. Okay, that removes. And then here's our inside. We have a slide-in door right there. This is another long print. I'll be providing an option with a floor cut right about here. So you can do that in two sections. Last thing I'm going to show you today is our mining elevator. Uh, the ramp is from our large scaffolding set. I'll be including this. If you want more scaffolding, you'll have to buy the kit for that off of our back catalog. Uh, the mine elevator itself is divided into two parts. You have the horse mill on one side and the elevator car on the other. Let's see here. The elevator car is controlled with actual strings, so you'll have to get some rope. This axle prints right here prints in two halves. 
what you'll want to do is get some string in there before you go gluing it all together. Let's see if I can get it out of here. There we go. Let's see if I can disassemble it a little bit here for you. Kind of show you. Oh yeah, there we go. So you see that? When I glued that together, I got that string in there just how I wanted it. Okay. And then you can see I got a square right there that fits right into your flywheel. Right here, it's the same flywheel on both apparatuses. Um, it technically does work, but it's so light, you know, the parts just kind of end up being pushed around. But if you uh, want to glue the parts down, you'll be able to spin things and uh, get the elevator to go up and down. Now this elevator is pretty petite in terms of some of the geometry on it. So I do have a resin version rigged up for you. And I'm going to be using some new resin support style that was uh, shown to me this month, which I think you'll like. Okay, and then the rest of this elevator, there's nothing to it. You got two caps here. There's nothing to stack them. Just glue them on with uh, your favorite super glue and gravity, okay? And we'll move on to the horse mill here. The flywheel will fit on there fairly snug, just like it did on the other part. It lifts off. This is just two parts that you can glue together. Um, then you got spots here for two horses if you want them. You can resin print those if you want to use our horses or you can use your own. Now, this lower part here is designed. This part actually comes out and then this part is loose. And then this part prints like that with a peg, that's the ground. I designed it that way. So if you do want to spin it around, You can, you can spin this part without moving the horses, okay? So you don't have to worry about knocking them down or whatever. You might have to sand it a little bit to get it as loose as you need it to be. All right, let's take a look at that mound real quick and then we're wrapping it up and we're all done. All right, here's the longer mountain. You can see we got a cave entrance right there. Got some space to put some things in. Not really much wider than a hallway. I'll try next month to see if I can do something a little more exciting. Anyways, you can see those open pegs in place there. And see how easy it is to just push those down. And like I said before, you can either increase or decrease. Well, most of them go down easy. You can increase or decrease the size of those. Uh, one or two or three percent to sort of get the desired snugness that you want. Okay, so you can see how easy those are to push down. And then when we put, put them back up, we just get a common nail or a small screwdriver. You can see the holes go all the way through. So we'll just put our nail in like that. And then we can just push up the head of the open peg get it back down where we need it so we can use it as a as a stacking mechanism again all right so thanks for stopping in and checking it out that's the end of our presentation today it's time for me to go get a shower and we'll see you next month okay